Hey everyone, welcome to this free lesson. Um, so in this series, I'm gonna be talking about imaginary numbers and negative square roots. So this is just the basic idea behind this. So kind of giving you definitions and just the basics of evaluating. So as a reminder, pause and try the examples and there are always free guided notes available. So let's start by just talking about what is an imaginary number. So an imaginary number is actually, we refer to as i, and i equals the square root of negative one. So different courses have different ways of dealing with this, but a lot of times when we talk about square roots, we usually say that you, to start, when we're just kind of getting the basics, we say that you cannot evaluate a negative square root. It can't be done um, at the moment anyways. But that, that's actually a little bit of a, a lie. Um, you can technically do it. It's just now it's going to require imaginary numbers. So this is actually what the imaginary number is. It is just a negative square root. And imaginary numbers open up a new number system called the complex numbers. So complex numbers are numbers of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. So a, this is called the real part, and bi is called the imaginary part. So a lot of times when we talk about algebra, we talk about the real numbers. The real numbers are basically anything, right? Anything you can think of. It can be a really weird number like pi, or it could be a fraction, or a whole number, or an integer, or whatever you want. That Those are the real numbers. And a lot of times with algebra, we kind of just say that the real numbers are the biggest number set that you can get. But then we can open up a whole new set of numbers called the complex numbers, and now that's a plus bi. So that's kind of the idea behind this. Okay. So now let's talk about actually how do I create or find or evaluate with imaginary numbers. So before we begin, you should already feel comfortable simplifying um, just radicals in general. So if not, I've got some links to that in the comments. So the way that we think about this, we know that we can break this up into pieces. So I can totally evaluate the square root of nine. I just can't evaluate the square root of negative one. So I could break this up like this and, and well, I should say previously I said we couldn't maybe evaluate this. But now that I've broken this up like this, so the square root of nine is just three, and now we know that the square root of negative one, I just write it as i. So this is actually it. This is all that you have to do. So it's just a slight tweak. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try that with these examples. So to start, so this one, so again, if I kind of use that same reasoning, so this is the square root of 25 times the square root of negative one, so this is just five i. This next one, this would be nine i. Now for this one, we're gonna have to think about just how we simplify uh, square roots in general. So now I'm gonna have the square root of four, the square root of three, and then the square root of negative one. So here are kind of the, all the ways I would break down this particular radical. And so then the way that we'd write this is 2i times the square root of three. So in general, you wanna have the i come before the square root just because it, it makes it more clear kind of what your answer is. And then if I look at d here, so d, this is just gonna equal i times the square root of seven. We can't actually break that down any farther. So as far as how you're actually gonna simplify some of these things, so it's a little bit of a case by case basis, just like any radical. And basically now when you see that square root with the negative, now you're just gonna pull that out and write it as an i. So let's just try a couple more of these. Um, so pause the video and hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for this first one, so this will be now the square root of 25 is five, the square root of 16 is four, and then because I've got that negative underneath, this is going to be five over four i. Now, these last three are there to kind of make you think for a second because sometimes people get to the i and then they just try to bust it out on everything. That's not what you're supposed to do if you think about what you know about higher radicals. So in the case of the cube root of negative eight, we don't need i for this, right? We know that negative two times negative two times negative two will give me negative eight. So this is just straight up negative two. And then i only has to do with, um, I only has to do with square roots. So right now we'll just say that we cannot evaluate. Um, I usually write just for my purposes, if we cannot evaluate for now, we just think of it as it does not exist. Um, so however you kind of think through that. But now for here for H, 
So once again, I can break this down, right? So this will be really the square root of, why don't we call this negative 16 times two? So this becomes four i times the square root of two. So be careful. So don't just think, oh, now I've got i, so now I'm just gonna bust it out everywhere. You have to still think through the details kind of logically, and this only works for square roots. All right. Moving on, now let's talk about how you would evaluate uh, radicals that have negatives in them. So this is this actually, I think, works maybe a little counterintuitively in some ways um, from what you'd think. You don't just multiply these numbers together. You need to make sure that your answer is capturing the fact that these are both negative. So the way that you do that is you actually first pull the eyes out like this. And in doing this, so we're actually going to discover something kind of interesting. So now I have i times i, which is i squared, and then square root of 3 times square root of 2, this is going to end up being square root of 6. So now we have to think about what is i squared. Well, we know that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So if I have, if I'm going to square that, what does that end up leaving me with? Well, actually, that just cancels out the square root then. And now I can actually consider this to just equal negative 1. So this is kind of an interesting phenomenon. So for our purposes over here then, i squared is negative 1. So this whole thing will then just equal the negative square root of 6. So this is kind of a key fact, actually. This is something that you should know. You have to have this memorized. i squared equals negative 1. It's kind of a big deal. All right. So why don't you go ahead and try these and hit play when you're ready. So for these first two, so I'm going to have i times the square root of 6 times i times the square root of 5. So I get the negative square root of 30 by similar reasoning to the last one. Now here for b, so this one I can actually simplify a little bit farther. I'll write this down here. So I've got i times the square root of 6 and i times the square root of 2. So this gives me i squared times the square root of 12. And I can totally break this down, right? So the square root of 12, this will give me ultimately negative 2 times the square root of 3. So I'm, I'm assuming that you feel pretty comfortable breaking this down. If not, you might want to watch one of the videos in the, in the comments below. So there we can break this down farther. And we can do this same thing with c. So first I'm going to pull out these i's. So I get i squared equals square root of 150, and if I simplify that, then I will get negative 5 times the square root of 6. Okay, so there's that. Now I just want to pivot real quick here. What happens if I change this to a division problem? So you still have to use that same idea, right? So first I pull out the i's. But what happens as a result of doing this? Well, the i's actually drop out, right? So now I'm just left with the square root of 6 over the square root of 2. And we know that that will just simplify then to the square root of 3. So the this loses its, uh, I, always, I think it's, I made up this word, but negativeness. <laughs> um, so this lo loses its negativeness, but it's not because you're just directly dividing them. It's because these i's actually are canceling out. So it's a little bit of a... a change in, in reasoning. It's not just I divided these into each other. It's because I pulled the eyes out and they canceled. So very important that you understand that. So I've got just two of these for you to try. So go ahead and try them and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for this first one, so this is going to be i times the square root of 50 over i times the square root of 2. So my eyes drop out. So then I'm ultimately just left with the square root of 25. So this whole thing just equals 5. And then for this other one, so now I've got i times the square root of 7 over i times the square root of 2. So now I'm just left with the square root of 7 over the square root of 2. So what do we do here? Well, we know that a radical is not simplified unless um, they're, they're, you can't have a radical in the bottom. So we have to actually rationalize this. So I'm just going to now rationalize this by multiplying the top and bottom by the square root of 2. So I get the square root of 14 over 2. If this is totally foreign to you, I will drop a link to how to rationalize in the comments um, because this is something that I'm assuming that you understand at this point. Okay, so that is everything. Um, so thanks for watching. I've got some more videos on how to work with these. So I'll see you in the next ones.